Good morning, church. Can we all please rise up? We'll start with a word of prayer. A loving Father, thank you for bringing us together today into your house again, Lord. Another Sunday, another Sunday to experience you, Lord, to worship you, Father. A privilege, Father. Definitely a privilege, Lord. We we are unworthy to like come and stand every Sunday to just sing and go back to our own lives doing our own things, Father. But Lord, you are so gracious, Lord. You've given us an opportunity to come today and to get things right with you, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. I pray, Father, that even during the time of worship, let it be about you, Lord. Help us to experience you like never before, Lord. Move in us, Lord. We invite you this day. In Jesus' most precious name, I pray. Amen. One of the uh, characters that always challenges me in the Bible is the character of David, right? Um, I uh, often, whenever I'm leading worship, I touch upon the life of David and um, there's a reason behind it challenges me because the character of David is he keeps things very raw and real with God. In fact, that's something that Hepsi Baka shared a couple of weeks back when she was leading, when she was uh, giving the message. David is the kind of person who constantly chased God, who pursued God no matter what, where he was in his life, right? Through his highs, through his lows, he's only thinking about God. Even when he sins, he runs back to God. Um, but the beauty, uh, beauty of all of this is, you know, in Acts 13, 22, God testifies concerning him. He says, I have found in David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart who will do all my will. What kind of confidence God has in David, right? And for God to even call him a man after my own heart. And that moves me every single time. In fact, I get goosebumps sometimes, you know, just thinking of God just calling him his own. And um, like I mentioned earlier, sin didn't really stop him from going back to God. His worries in his life didn't stop him from going back to God. It was very simple. He just loved God unconditionally. But you know what was very interesting? The way he loved God is one, but the way he showed it to God was another thing. That is through his act of worship. He just loved to worship God. Wherever he was, however he was, he just loved to go back to God and just worship him. Right? And um, even when sin came into his life, he realized actually in, in Psalms 32, it's supposed to be a psalm that he wrote when he was in a rough phase, when he was being when God told him that he's going to be judged for the sin that he committed. Um, he says, Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous ones, and shout for joy, all you are upright in heart. There is a really nice uh, uh, free, uh, explanation to this. One of the writers, he says, he realized his righteousness did not come from his actions, but from his love for and submission to God. When everyone would have run away from God at that point in time, he still ran back to God. And it, didn't, it wasn't about him at the end of the day. It was about getting it right with God. He chose God. Church, the reason why I'm sharing this with you is the question that we need to ask ourselves is where are we with God when it comes to worshipping Him? Are we having it right with God? Are, is our heart at the right place every Sunday when we come to worship? It's not just on a Sunday, right? It's easy to worship on a Sunday, in fact. But when we go out of this church, are we really in the right place to worship God every single day? I think that's something we need to ask. It doesn't matter what life throws at us, right? Because God, is, God has made it very clear for us. It's all about Him. And you can find your strength in Him. Let's sing this first song, Trading My Sorrows. Can we all clap our hands?
probably a couple of days years and then it's gone but the moment we focus on when we add lord to this the whole equation changes in fact it's the fundamental of our christian life right where we are constantly asked to choose god over ourselves the moment we choose god the value of that joy increases right it is eternal it's everlasting and uh, it actually warms the heart of god in other words it's choosing god over ourselves choosing him every day just like what david did probably loving god no matter what church even as we continue to worship i want you to like really find ways on how we can choose god in our lives understand what the joy of the lord is for us individually right Let's sing this next song come now is the time to worship I encourage you all to like remember this as we sing this song
the time to worship God. Now is the time to give. Father, I'm sure there's going to be things that come our way and it's going to distract us from you, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you've made life simple for us, Lord. You've made life easy for us, Lord. That is by dying on the cross and showing to us that we need to choose you, Lord. What kind of love you've shown us, Father, and we're still battling this out, Father. Lord, we lay all our crowns at your feet, Lord, this morning. We fall down at your feet, Lord, because we need you, Jesus. Speak to us, Father. Change us, Lord. Shake our foundations, Father, so that we'll be closer to you, Lord.
cry holy 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 is the lamb we cry holy oh holy we cry
for showing us, Lord, that you are more important than anything, Father. In 
Jesus' most precious name I pray. Amen.